In the previous episode, Heartland Development subdivided its small parking lot into multiple outlots and built a new residential neighborhood. They did this in an effort to bring activity to the mall, provide housing for its workers, and raise capital. And though there is now more activity at the mall, the new businesses and the mall continue to struggle. And there are a number of reasons for this. Regionally, there's a lack of elementary and high school capacity, and that's making people second guess moving to the area. The region lacks a true university, which has led to a shortage of college educated workers. And there is still a significant housing shortage. Heartland CEO, Emily Carlson, can't do much about the first two issues, but she can work to bring more housing to the area. She hatches a plan to increase the density of her approved development behind the grocery store. She approaches Mayor Lee with the plan, and he appears to be lukewarm at best towards the idea. Mayor Lee has been focusing all of his time on a design competition for a new coastal park. And though there is no funding to construct the park, the mayor did sneak funding into the budget for the planning effort for the park. The public seems very excited, but they do not realize that funding is not available for implementation. But more on that in another episode. Knowing how important housing is for all of the businesses in the community, Emily reaches out to Chuckles to gauge his interest in the project. He's heard rumblings that he's been struggling to find employees for his crazy critter carnival. And though Chuckles was originally opposed to the project, he now seems supportive due to his own self-interests, as well as an offer by Emily to create a pond separating her development from the park. What Chuckles doesn't realize is that the pond would be required regardless to meet stormwater requirements. And as the old saying goes, politics makes strange bedfellows. And when the project goes to council, Chuckles speaks in favor of the project along with numerous other business leaders in the area. I believe that Heartland has been operating in good faith and has proposed a development that we should all get behind. The housing is desperately needed, and I'm happy to see that the area wouldn't be wasted on just a couple dozen large lot single family houses. And I, for one, can't help but be excited to spend my days looking at the new pond. Mayor Lee, surprisingly, speaks against the project. He knows that Chuckles is planning a run for mayor and feels that an adversarial stance against multifamily may be viewed favorably by the public. We'll have to see how that goes for him in the future. The request proves popular with the city council and is unanimously approved. In today's episode, we're going to build this new neighborhood and create a pond to act as a buffer in between the park and the neighborhood. We're also going to bring in one new mod and a few new assets to increase the overall activity in the build, so stay tuned for that. And if you think Mayor Lee is right, hit the like button. And if you agree with Chuckles, hit the like button for that too and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Or if you'd prefer, leave an emoji for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Superior in Nicolay Bay. And we've got a good one today. We are going to be dramatically increasing the population of this city in an effort to resolve some of the issues that we've had with employment. So let's get into the plan. We are going to spend most of the episode today right about here, building out a new residential neighborhood. We're gonna have some denser development over here near this new road that we put in in the previous episode, and we'll have some lower density development as we move away from the core of the community. We're gonna build our new pond right about here, and uh, we're gonna convert this park into a park life park, which is, seems to be good timing since the whole park is burning down. It's a time for renewal. But before we do that, I want to introduce a couple of new mods into the build. Let's begin with our assets. And the first asset that we're gonna look at is a direct response to the survey that was on the community tab. In that survey, I asked you if we should convert the mall into a commercial site using Rico or add service blocks to add activity to the mall. Overwhelmingly, you all suggested that I go with service blocks. So that's what we're doing today. Normally I use block services, but they're growable. And because I don't have district themes in the build, I decided to go for this one instead. These are Rico only, they do not grow in, and they provide the same functionality that Block Services does. So while I want to add these into the build right now, we've got to wait until our housing shortage is resolved. But I will show you how these work. Basically, you can grab one of these blocks. This one right here, for instance, is low density commercial. You select it, you paste it down. It doesn't ruin anything. It doesn't have any impact. And then you use move it. So I'm hitting M and you can drag this in to wherever you want to spawn people. So I could add this right inside the entrance here, and now this will function as a commercial building. So what I would want to do would be to add this to every single entry point into the mall. It's important to recognize that each one of these blocks for the lower density version is five workers, and for the higher density version is 10. 
Now we could go into Rico and change these, but my inclination is to actually grab one of these, place it, and then just continue to place additional assets on top of it. So this now I've added maybe 10 of these. This would act as a hundred jobs right here. Obviously we cannot afford those right now, so we'll get rid of them for the time being, but we will add those at the end of the episode. The next mod is outside traffic balancer. And I have to give a huge shout out to planner Pete on discord for recommending this. The purpose of this mod is to balance out your traffic in between your highways and your local road or small highway connections to the outside world. So this mod is already enabled, which is why things look so good. We don't have a glut of traffic, dummy traffic spawning through here. They're mostly coming on the highway. The net result of this is that traffic generally looks better in these outside connections. In fact, here's how it looked before. This gives me the confidence to actually upgrade this into a highway and add connections in the other parts of the build where I've just kind of left them because I didn't want to generate a bunch of dummy traffic. So let's start out in this area and convert these to highways. Very good. And the traffic doesn't appear to be backing up on these roads. And this road going out of Superior, I left it as a dirt road and I never connected it up, but I want to convert this to a highway. I'd expect to see that right here. So let's do it. And it's amazing how infrequent the traffic is. We're seeing a new vehicle every five to 20 seconds. It's much more manageable. And as a result, we're not seeing crazy backups on this road. And I just love that it means that we have a bit of activity down here. It actually seems like this road has a purpose. And I'm not sure that I pointed this one out, but I never actually made the connection of this road by the airport to the outside world. And that was always the intention. So we're absolutely going to add that. There we go. The exact same situation, infrequent cars. It's looking so good. And then the last one is right here in Evergreen. And this might surprise you. I don't think that I really talked about this, but I always intended for this road to go out the side of the map. So what we're going to do is add this right here. And eventually this will become Interstate 98. And I think I might just add a stop sign on the road going into town. Probably good enough. And we have traffic coming down. Oh, that is just wonderful. I love this. And the last asset that we're going to be adding into the build is the Park People Generator and the Park People Generator Plus. This might sound familiar to you because we used it in Clearwater County to create Ashland Beach. This is very similar to the hangout markers we used in Verde Beach to create the beach. Unfortunately, if you grab those inside of the game, they don't actually work, which is why we have to have these park people generators. Park people generator plus gives you these seating options, which will also spawn people, which is why I wanted to add this into the build. All of that said, these need to be on a road or in a park, which is why we're going to be creating our pond with a park. To begin, let's take a look at our contours and see what we're looking at. This is pretty flat ground, so we're going to need to drop things down here. But I want this to be a recreational amenity, basically the exact opposite of our pond over here so that you actually want to go to it. So we're going to make this a little more shallow than this one, and it's going to be a little bit wider. You might wonder, why would we need this pond? And it's really because of the impervious area that urban development creates. Impervious being area that water cannot penetrate, be it a paved service, a building, or even in some cases, landscaping. So we're gonna create this pond right here, and I'm gonna go into the shift terrain tool and basically go to our lowest brush strength. And now that I have the generalized depth, I'm gonna increase the brush strength and try to create a fairly organic shape. And I think we'll go with something like this. Now, in reality, we wouldn't just be trying to create an organic shape. That's not the purpose of this. It's really to try to hit a certain amount of water storage for certain flood events. So you might target a 500 year flood or a flood that you would only expect to happen every 500 years and try to have enough water storage for that flood event. And truthfully, we've been hitting those 500 year events much more routinely than we should be due to climate change. So in some cases, ponds like this would be made even deeper than they would have been in the past. So why don't we do a bit of that? And basically in the back end here, I've dropped it. 
Now this is going to be where our development is and I already know that we want to have some sort of beach or direct access to the water. So I don't want to this, this area to be all that deep. This will also change the way that the water looks when we place it in there and I like the idea of that. I'm gonna place a teeny tiny water spawn point 0 0.01. Again, important not to be 0.00 because that would make it a vacuum and not a water generator. There we go. I think it's stabilized and I didn't even flood anything. I'm impressed. I think that might be the first time that that has ever happened. How uh, appropriate, right? Before we get City Skylines 2, I finally get the water mechanic down. <laughs> now I want to flatten this out a bit. So I'm gonna get a larger brush size. I just want this taper down to be spread a bit. Very good. And now let's add some sand to the area that will be our beach. So we'll take our brush size, make it really low and I'll take the brush strength up a bit. And by a bit, I mean, I'll raise it to the top. <laughs> oh, that's looking good. Now, here's the one thing. If this were a vanilla build, I would have done all the landscaping first, but because this is not vanilla, I've decided to do it afterwards. That was a conscious decision. The main reason why in a vanilla game, you can't place landscaping in the water. And truthfully, in a modded game, you can't either, but we have move it, which makes it possible. So I want to start out by adding some grasses along the outside. So let's just add a couple of these right here. We'll go into move it. Then we'll use our marquee selection, select this control C, and now we can paste this. And the nice thing about move it is it allows us to paste this in the water as well. And now I wanna layer in a few other landscaping options as well. So I'm gonna go for this right here, our lantana. And I'll just place a couple of these and we'll do the exact same thing with move it, marquee selection tool, control C, and now we can just paste these around. And now I wanna thoughtfully add a couple of flowers through here. You might see that poking up along the side. So I'm gonna place one here, move it again, control C. And for this one, we're just gonna place a few here and there. And then lastly, I want to add in some of our high vegetation, but I want to be really be thoughtful about this because some of this vegetation looks fairly tropical, like this one right here. That looks like little palm trees. We don't want to add that. Now I placed a variety of things here. We're going to do the exact same thing that we've been doing. We will continue to use move it to grab these. I did grab a couple of these though for a very unique reason. So we've got some of these that are really low. I have these basically to change the water color. So I just wanna grab these and move it. And I'm gonna paste these underwater after I make a patch. All right, I am fairly pleased with how this is turning out so far. I did leave a couple of open areas. I think what we're gonna do there is place a bit of riprap and maybe have a couple of fishing docks out there. And I like that this looks darker here, like there's a, some algae or other things like that growing out here. The one thing that I really miss is cattails. We have that in Clearwater County, we don't have it here. I really miss it. <laughs> All of that said, what we need to do now is focus on the park because this is going to need to be a park if we want to get our people generators and a few other things going on in here. So we're gonna draw a park district. And this will be the general outline of our park. It is absolutely massive. And let's rename this Superior Park. So now that we have this, we need to start to think about our park entryways. And we have this playground here, but I'm gonna get rid of it. We'll make everyone sad because we're gonna add in a park entry point somewhere nearby. And then once we have that, I'm gonna add in one of the playgrounds from that. And truthfully, there's one behind the school. We're probably okay, but I still wanna have one anyway. So we will go for a large main gate. And I still like the idea of going with these paths right here are kind of old school paths. So we are going to upgrade this or downgrade this, I guess, depending on the way you're looking at it, to be one of these normal non-terraforming paths. And it's always important to have anarchy off. And one of the reasons why is when I was adjusting this, I ended up sinking way far down into the ground. And that's all due to anarchy being on. So if you've ever seen that where you kind of just 
have your road twist and go underground, it's probably because you have anarchy on and you, you need to turn it off. <laughs> now to unlock this, we're gonna use our network multi-tool. And then there's the unlock segment mode. We'll just unlock that, upgrade this. And then in surface tool, I'm actually gonna get rid of that within here. And then we'll relock this because we don't wanna break our asset inadvertently. That looks pretty good in my estimation. So I'm very pleased with how that turned out. Now for our side gates, we're gonna change these as well. And I wanna focus in this area for just a minute. And I wanna give Planner Pete another shout out because Planner Pete suggested that maybe we take this couplet and it needs to end in a more normal way. <laughs> right now it's kind of just terminating into this local road. And he would expect that to neck down into this road and I completely agree. So we are gonna use our network multi-tool to make this happen. And I wanna use this create curve mode again. The same tool that we used in Clearwater County so effectively last time. And look what you can do. Just quickly change this over. I had to select the right end, but now we have a really nice connection. We are going to leave our homes here. I'm going to see if I can uh, grab these and plop them in their location so that they don't disappear. And then we'll just give them a larger front yard because I don't want these to leave. Then I'm going to see if I can do the exact same thing with this road here. So we'll select these, change the ends, and there we go. Now I'm going to go into here, so I'm, I grab my picker mod and I'm going to select these buildings. And as I do this, these become historical buildings in Rico and they shouldn't disappear. And now I'm seeing I can actually just pop these right on top of each other. And apparently that does the trick too, so maybe that's the correct approach. That was the way. So next time, if I were to do this again, I would just use the picker, select it, and then paste it right into its place. Now I'm going to get rid of this road and we need to clean this up. So that's just wiggling things around with move it. Wow. That's really wrong. <laughs> and then going into node controller and let's square this up. That is looking good. And now I want to get the roadway directionality correct and I'll turn anarchy on so I can reverse this and get this in here correctly. And then I really want a four lane road piece right here. So we are going to go for our new four lane to you road. We'll paste that right there. And what I like about this is it's going to send the traffic here and then give a turn lane. So it's just a little bit more logical in my opinion. And then we've got to signalize this or not signalize this, but maybe add in a stop sign. So we're prioritizing this through movement here. And then just to clean things up, I want to go into TMPE potentially and see if I need to change anything here like this. I do not want them to loop back around. I want them to go straight through. So we'll use our lane connectors, click on this control S and now you're going in the right direction. Very, very good. Now we've got to add some additional entry points into the park. So we're going to go for some of our park side gates and I want to place these in places that make some sense. So one of them will be right over here. So you could get off the bike network and go into the park if you wanted to. Next, we'll have one over here, which will kind of be by the edge of our neighborhood. Then I want to add one to the end of the cul-de-sac. And this is actually pretty easy to do. We're just going to place this here. Use move it. And I'll spin it around. I'll hold down alt. So now it's straight with the road. I'll just place it right here. Before we attach this, I want to replace this again. And now that that's a dirt path going in, we'll just reorient our paths a bit. And there we go. That is a nice connection. Eventually, we'll have another connection going off into the neighborhood, but this is pretty good for now. And you know, we have all these other entry points here, but it's not really a big deal. We already have everything unlocked, so maybe I should just leave this be. I could certainly add additional entry points. It's just not going to make much of a difference. What I do think I might do, though, is add to this and send this to be closer to the high school area. And then I'm going to add a new node right here but I can see that this might actually create some issues. So I'm gonna delete this node before I add a new one. And then we'll need to replace that roadway. And then in node controller, I'm gonna change this to a crossing. There we go. And now you can get from the school campus right into the park. That is a much better connection. And now I wanna make a couple of fixes over here. Obviously we've gotta unlock these as well. So we'll pop into our network multi-tool and make that happen over here as well.
So we've got those all set up now. The only thing we need to do is add a couple of amenities to our park to make it more of a special place. And I'm thinking it's it's really small scale stuff like a gazebo. That's the kind of thing that I want to place in here. And then I just set those to be a little further back. Now the one problem that we're seeing is that there's this gazebo here that doesn't have power. I think we have a solution already in the build. We have our better underground power lines and I think we could probably use those to bridge the power. And these act a lot like these transformers. You just can't see them. And I love that. These are absolutely fantastic. You can even move them and move it. And I believe the value, yeah, they, they basically cost, it's a hundred bucks and 16 cents a week in upkeep. It's basically nothing. They're absolutely outstanding. And I'm wondering, is there a way that I could use these two to connect everything? There it is. Look at that. Outstanding. Now, the other thing I want to focus on is I want to have some sort of access to the water. So we're going to add a park pier. And then in the nature reserves, there are actually little fishing cabins. And I want to add one of those as well. And then we'll need some sort of connection here. But I think that that would be a really nice little amenity there. It's a little awkward having these so close to one another. What I think I might do is turn one of these to focus in a slightly different direction and not like that. <laughs> That's no good. There we go. Just not quite so uncomfortable. And for this one, I'm almost wondering if we shouldn't put this back here. So I was initially going to have the ability to, to come up and, and fish from this area. But I think it might be nice just to have an open spot where you could come and do whatever you want. So we'll add the fishing pier right there, drop this down so it's actually at a reasonable height, and then folks could fish in this area. And truthfully, with all the algae and whatnot, it might actually be a pretty good spot for fishing. So I like it. The one thing that's not so great is you've got the football field right there. So I think that we will hide that behind a bit of landscaping. And I like that. That is pretty darn good. So because I didn't use this as intended, we could leave it like this if we want. But I think I might add in a little bit more of this. I, I talked about riprap in the uh, earlier, but I I'm, I'm leaning against that and I'm leaning towards. We'll just uh, grab this and copy and paste this in place. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. There's one last thing I want to do, and that's near the elementary school. And that is add a playground back here to replace the one that we took away. And we've got this climbing frame one, and we're going to add that to this area. And the nice thing is now that we are in a park area, this can basically be wherever. So we're going to add this right here. And then to show that this is part of the school, we'll have a path coming to this. And there we go. And, and this thing is fully functional which is the really exciting part about this. There should be people hanging out here, a couple of kids. I love it. I love it. That is wonderful. And it looks like it terminates into the back of the school parking lot. So maybe we should modify that just a bit. Yeah, that's probably more appropriate. I also noticed one other thing over here. We've got some kind of oddness going on with these homes now that we have uh, got them backed up. Let's fix that. We'll add in some pavement. There we go. So I just added in one of the eight by one pieces and then deleted the concrete that I didn't want. And that's looking much, much, much better. And with that, I think that we are finally ready to start building our neighborhood. Let's begin by planning out our roadway network. And this is going to be a fairly basic network. And we're going to use our rural roads to start like I always like to. The very first thing I want to talk about is kind of how things are going to orient. So obviously, we don't want to use this shopping center as a part of the local roadway network. But we will have a connection into here. Just one though. And I'm taking this seven units out so that when I send this road over here, we have a little bit of separation in between the shopping center and this new road. And then I want to look back at our boundaries. You can see that this area right here is all slated to be developed. So we are going to send a road back here and we'll follow the pond. We're going to use this as the main entry point into our site. 
So now the big question is which road is going to be the most prominent? And I'm thinking it's going to be this one. We're going to focus on this road more than this one. So because of that, this will be our collector. This will be a local road and we'll create a nice curve right here. And we'll take this one and tee this into it. Because this is our collector, I want this to exit the neighborhood cleanly as well. And then the other roads can branch off from here. So this will be our one fairly direct route all the way through here. And I'm going to again draw a couple of segments to show where this road should go. And now I'm going to try to use that create curve mode to add this. So it's just selecting these. We had to select the correct ends. There we go. I don't love what it's done here though. So we can soften that using our range at line mode. And that's a really nice, gentle looking road now. And the story behind this road is we just want to ensure that it's a through road. This is going to have most of our traffic that goes through the neighborhood. Everything else is secondary, but we are going to make this highly connected. And on this road, I think we're going to do a little bit, something a little bit different than we did at the mall. So I want these buildings to front the mall facing road. Now you have to remember, there's basically no terrain here to speak of. So the reason why we're adding this road and terminating it here is simply that it's so that it's not a through road. So we're trying to make this remain a fairly residential street and we're gonna cul-de-sac this right here. We're gonna probably do something similar through here after we add in at least one more direct connection through the neighborhood. And there we go. We've got our cul-de-sac bulbs and everything is looking nice and orderly through here. And you can see the hierarchy quite clearly right here. This is our main collector connects up to these couple of arterials all the way around here. This is a very suburban layout. It is going to have a bunch of fairly urban development through here. There's going to be another road through here as well, but I'm going to let the buildings dictate where that road goes. That's not a luxury you often have, but when you do have it, you might as well take advantage. So that's what we'll do. Now I want to upgrade some of these. And what I think we're going to do is have a road basically with trees through here until we get to the beach area. Then I'm going to do something kind of weird and I'm going to grab this parking lot road. We're just going to upgrade along this beach area with a parking lot road. And then I'll grab this and finish out along the collector. And this would be a collector two coming in. So we'll add that there. And then lastly, I want to go here. I upgraded this to be a normal road, but it really shouldn't be. In fact, I want to ensure that it's not. We're going to make that one of these parking lot roads and then I'm going to proactively adjust this. So I want this to have a lower speed so that folks aren't using this as a cut through. It already has a lower speed. So 15 miles per hour that will dissuade some people from using that. Still an option, but that shouldn't be your first choice. So this is where I'd like to begin and I want to turn our contours on because we're going to be working a lot with placing buildings individually. We're going to zone over here and that'll be fine. But over here, we're definitely going to plop some stuff. So I'm going to need this to be very flat if we're going to do what I want to do. And there we go. A mostly flat treeless building pad. We will need to fix our slopes, so we'll do that quickly. And now for the reason why I did that, I want to select some higher density buildings. So there's a variety that I want to choose from. And I think where we're going to start is with some Korean buildings, which is something that I haven't done before. Now, here's the interesting thing about this particular set. They're actually all found under low density. So it's if you're looking for these, that's where you got to find them. Now, for this, there are some it looks like there's some Korean on the side. I don't want that. So we are going to try to hide a bit of that, but I want to line the back of this with some higher density buildings and then we'll taper off as we get closer to the road. So the idea would be that some of these buildings in this corner might form the a future transit oriented development. But for the time being, it's just going to be a little note of activity within this neighborhood. And this looks pretty good, but here's why we flattened everything. I want to be able to move these buildings around and make it seem like they're all one big building. So it's fairly simple with these Korean buildings. They do fit nicely together. They generally have 
flat walls. I like the way these look. They're 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 pretty nice. And then I do want to think about parking. Some of these have underground, so that's probably fine. But there still would need to be some sort of access to reach the back of these buildings. So we are going to add in one of these zonable pedestrian paths. Might seem to be a, a strange solution here, but these aren't actually pedestrian paths unless you eliminate cars on them. And I'm noticing that water symbol and I don't want to worry about that. So what we're going to do is place our water pipes early. We'll put them underneath the road right where they belong. All right, let's focus on this area right here. And what I want to go for here is some of our wall to wall buildings. Now, I know that these buildings are a little bit flamboyant and they can feel just slightly out of place in some areas, but this is a brand new area and I think it's going to be one that is pretty ritzy as well. I do want to focus on my building heights though, because I talked about terracing back. So I'm setting that here. I went into show extra filter panels and then I sorted this by building height. And for me, I'm going to use feet because it's what I know. When you go into these now on the right hand side, it tells you the, the height of the building. So this right here is 47 feet tall or 14 meters. So that is helpful in helping us figure out our minimum heights. So I'm looking at this and I go that this is five, five stories. I might want to be a little bit taller than that. So I'm going to say the minimum here is 50 feet tall. Anything that we place now is going to be 50 or better. And I'm actually going to go 70 as a minimum for these. And we'll go with something pretty tall around this edge, almost as tall as this. And I've decided to place a bunch of these tall ones right around the corner here. Now, there, there aren't many of them. And I say that because a lot of these are these weird split level ones, which defeat the purpose of what I want to do in this area. There will be a place for these, but it's probably going to be a little closer to this area. I want to have that note of density here. And I want it to feel like these are one gigantic building. So having the split building doesn't do that for me. And there we go. So it looks like one gigantic wall of building. And I like this because it gives us the opportunity to tuck some parking away back here or things of that nature. And it makes it feel like a big apartment complex, which was the goal. We're going to terrace this back. So we're going to set this back and maybe we'll go 50 for our next height minimum. And I'm only focusing on the minimum. I don't I don't care about the max right now, or at least I didn't. Maybe I do now and we'll say 65 because I don't want to see those buildings again. And that's actually incredibly limiting. So I'm going to set this to be a bit lower. So we'll go 40 and that gives us a few more options. Now here I thought I could get away with one and I wanted to have this building kind of acting as the as the edge of this. I think we might actually just leave this as is and we will have some sort of unique little uh, parcel right here with maybe some greenery or things of that nature. And the very last thing I wanted to do here was grab some smaller buildings. I, we have to have two entryways into here. We can't just have one if we're going to have all this parking back here. And I've added a little parking facility back here. I just used one of the new vanilla ones. I'm not going to get overly crazy about this. And then we added a dog park back here because everyone loves a dog park. And then back here, we're going to try one of our people generators. So this is something that I talked about in the, in the mod segment. I think that these are going to be really impactful for us. So those are found underneath parks and then plazas. And these are just pretty simple assets. Here's the interesting thing about them. So they, you can't place them without a road or a park area and the arrows backwards. So it just things to keep in mind. We'll place a couple of these here. And then what I'm going to do is take our park area and just extend it back there. So now we've got these back here and it's in a park area. So technically it is satisfied with that. What it's not happy about is the lack of a path. So we're going to need to add some sort of path through here. And 
And there we go. That is a nice solution to this in my estimation. We have a couple of these and look at that. We've already got a visitor. It looks like it is Philip with two L's deciding to hang out at a park bench. Perfect. Enjoy yourself and I hope you enjoy your new home. Now, before we decorate this area, I do want to line this with townhouse style units. So those units are generally one wide and I'm going to be okay with a with, with looking at all of our options. I'd really like something that is narrow and a little bit deeper. And honestly, basically nothing fits the bill. So what I think we're going to do is grab these ones right here. They are one by twos. They are eco buildings and we should be able to pop a bunch of these right next to each other. Their colors will change just slightly. And I think we have a couple of variations if we wanted to mix it up. Now, this is an interesting situation. I want to continue this and I don't want this to dip down. So what we're going to do is just grab our pattern and then I'm going to use move it. We're just going to grab all of these control C and then hold down alt so that they line up with our old grid. And the funny thing is it's not listening to me. Best laid plans. The only thing I have slight regrets over is maybe I should have gone all with these lower ones because I wanted to taper off the densities and you can see that I've basically not done that. So I'm going to call a bit of a mulligan here and I think we're going to do that. All right, that's pretty good. The one thing that is going to be a little bit interesting now is we've got to have a road back here because you can see that there's rear access. And then I want to have some landscaping because from this parking lot, that is a pretty ugly wall. So we've got to find a way to cover that up. And that very well might be the first time that we landscape to hide a residential use from a commercial use, but the, here we are. <laughs> so feeling pretty good about that. I am going to add a bit of landscaping around these other uses. There's just, it's pretty barren at this point. All right, this is pretty well filled in at this point, and I like the way it looks. Got a little place to hang out, a bunch of townhomes. This is population. This is real population that we are going to be adding to this area. So before I forget, we're going to add our path connection back in here. And at the very end, we're likely going to add a couple of commercial uses along here. But I want to focus on this area first. And the reason why is I want to get this to be a lively beach scene. We've got our sand and now we're going to use our park people generator. So this is technically within the park, so we should be able to do basically whatever we want here. So we can grab some of our seating like this. Now this looks pretty bad, like we've made a mistake, but I think that I've got a solution here. Again, this wants to have some sort of path. Not a big deal. We can add our path. But here's the magic. I want to use this surface tool just to delete the path. So now, even though I don't have invisible paths in the build, we have an invisible path. This will still work. And now let's get some parking along here. So the idea is that this would be beachside parking, very simple to access. And it looks like we'll have to see what side of the road people are on. We might actually have, yeah, this, this segment right here is inverted. So I just used network multi-tool to invert that and that should prevent them from driving in the middle of the road. Now I'm going to add in parking right along this bottom segment. There we go. And this isn't necessarily the most beautiful thing in the world. We've got these angled and they're, they're kind of weird, but I think it's the best that we can do if we want to have parking all the way along here. And one of the things you might notice is that some of these parking stalls seem like they are hidden. That is because of our contours. Yeah, we've got to get these all to be at the same level. So we're going to control H this entire segment of road into place. So there will be some oddities right here. We'll live with those. When you turn your contours off, you can barely tell. So not a big deal. 
And then we're gonna round this out with a couple more larger buildings. And I decided to finish off with a couple of commercial uses over here. It seems like it would be appropriate to have something along this area, even though we've got this, it's just a different type of use. And then I think we'll add a pedestrian path back here just to give folks another way to get around, especially because of how uncomfortable this street would be potentially at some point in time. There we go. And this is basically the exact opposite of what we did over here. We are trying to block the rear of this building, which is where you might see some loading and things of that nature. I dig the way that looks. Now I want to focus on this little area right here. And this is a part of our main zoning district. So if I don't break this off, what we're going to see is that the same mid-century modern homes spring up through here. I'm not so sure that I have a problem with that. So I think we're going to place a couple of these through here and see how it turns out. Okay, I've let this run and fill in for a while, and I think that you can kind of see where I was gearing at. We did not end up getting the mid-century modern look in here, and honestly, I'm kind of happy about it. I wanted these to be modest homes that could be for workforce housing, just regular old people, not the fancy houses that we had over in the other part of the community that were really geared at tourists. So I think that this is a good fit, but I did decide to make a couple of changes as I was actually zoning and building this out and it wasn't adding a burning bush in the backyard back there or a burning house. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> what I decided to do was dezone this area and the thought process there is that this could potentially be some school owned land and potentially they would decide that this is where their new elementary school goes. So we're gonna add an elementary school because I think we have a need. And then the other change I made was we were gonna face the townhomes towards this road and I just don't see a world where that happens. I also really wanted to add a row of landscaping back here and I don't see a world where that makes a ton of sense, but we're gonna live in that world anyway. And uh, we'll just uh, pretend everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Oh, that was a real dumb idea. <laughs> well, we're gonna see this all go up in smoke, but uh, I think that that would be something that would be necessary back here to prevent some of that noise and light from being a problem. And then lastly, I want to take a look at our schools. And you can see, yeah, our elementary school availability is, it's a little low. It's low by about a school. A school has a capacity of 300, and we are uh, gonna be in a pretty equilibrium-ish sort of place if we place this. So we'll add that right here, and then we'll add a path and a playground to this area as well. And there we go, nothing all that different than what we had at the last school but I think that this is gonna be a huge help. I am curious though, how we're doing with the rest of our educational attainment. And interestingly, we could use another elementary school as we're adding people to the community. There's more people that wanna to go to school. We could use another high school and obviously we could use the university. So those uh, that's probably a topic that we need to address very, very soon. But we should be in a place now where we can start to address our service blocks. So let's go to it. Block services can be found using Find It too, and like I mentioned before, there's a whole variety of things that we can do with these. There's one thing in particular that I care about though, and that is I want to have a whole bunch of commercial through here. We have a strong commercial demand still. I'm hoping that we don't completely tank our community by adding these. All of that said, what we're going to do is place a number of these right in the corner. And this is five and I want to, I'm thinking that we're going to have maybe a hundred employees at each of the entry points. So there we go. A hundred jobs all right here in a bunch of overlapping blocks. And the blocks are technically buildings. So I will select all of them and then I'm just going to line the blocks up. So they're all in one place and I'm going to copy them to some of the other major entries into this area. And we've got to turn them around as well. And then over here, I think I'm going to be a little bit more relaxed about it. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and I'm going to slide these ones in right away. Basically into each of these doors, I'll just rotate it, paste it right in place. 
And I'm gonna go with a couple of different blocks. So I think we might go with an eco block. The reason why you might wanna do this is this, first of all, it's green cities. So it uses less electricity, less garbage, less tax income. So all sorts of reasons why you, this might be interesting to you. Obviously not having tax income is probably not one of those reasons, but maybe, maybe you don't like taxes. I don't know. I'm not you. <laughs> And now, once again, I am going to grab this, put this in the main mall entryway, and then I'm going to slide this one in. The other concern I have with these is that generally, yeah, we've got these need utilities. They are buildings. I'm also concerned that potentially we're not going to be able to load. I don't know if that's a thing with these, but we're going to double check. So, yeah, the building spawn point is wrong on this. So we are going to send this way out and then I'm going to apply this to all of these building types and that should help us. Before these all abandon though, I am going to place the water pipes underneath the road here and it really should only be this one that's the issue because we didn't have water pipes underneath this rear entry point. And then remember we placed a couple of spawn points that were a little bit different. So even though we've got these ones doing what we want them to do in terms of loading, we have to look at our other ones as well. So that might seem like a huge problem, but it's not that big of a deal. What I'm going to do to figure this out is pop into here and you can see how many of these you've used, although mine hasn't refreshed. So I'll hit refresh and it looks like I've used 85 of these and two of these. So I'm going to grab one of these eco spawn points, place it here temporarily, and then we'll do the whole spawn point thing again. And that should be close enough. And that might be something I fine tune off camera. I'll keep an eye on this and we will see. But generally, this should be good. We've got a whole bunch of jobs here now. The other thing I could have added and that I think I might add is some leisure and tourism back here because that is something that a mall provides. I mean, there are people who go to the mall because it is a place to relax and go mall walking. So I'm gonna add these mostly to the main entry point And then I'll do the exact same thing with tourism. So this should have absolutely ridiculous activity now. So I'm going to let this run for a minute because a, a clear way of gauging activity here in my mind would be seeing the parking lot start to fill up. So we'll let this go for a minute and we'll be right back. And I'll let this go for a few minutes and it's looking like things are improving in this area. What we're noticing is that there's a little bit of parking here. There are a couple of issues with the building spawn points that I'll probably need to fix on my own. Basically, I think we need to adjust the location of the blocks. Not a huge deal. We see that folks like Philip are going into the building, so that is working. And I've noticed that around basically every location where we've added these. So things are looking very good in my mind except for maybe that thing I just fixed. <laughs> so I am pretty pleased with how things have turned out. We did not have an impact at all on our commercial demand. So obviously we've still got to work on that. And maybe the next solution is to actually place some of the housing blocks back in other communities, back inside of some of those main street sort of buildings. But for now, I do think it's the right time to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour.
before I let you go, I wanted to talk about one fix that I made based upon your feedback. In previous episodes, someone pointed out that I did not have parking spaces along here. So I've added that in and I took the liberty of resetting some of these buildings. The reason I did that is I wanted to see if we were going to have things improve over here and these buildings would actually stay active. We're going to exit out of here and see. Hmm. Not feeling good about that. So it looks like we just don't have enough uneducated workers. So we are going to need more residential to make this happen. So I again, I do think that maybe going through some of our older areas and adding residential into our downtowns. And honestly, we just need to build a lot of residential at this point. So that might be something that we focus on very, very soon. But for the time being, I think that this is where we leave it here. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to thank you for taking the time to hang out with me today. It is a huge privilege to have a bit of your time, and I appreciate it. Don't take that for granted at all. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care. Bye-bye.